morning, good morning, good morning. Another glorious and wonderful day to know the goodness of the Lord. Just to know God. To know that He loves us and that He's got good plans for us. Amen. Well, I want to read in Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 16, is a verse that I really enjoy. I don't want to get too close to this mic and like blow me out. It says in verse 16, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. And I've often thought of that scripture, obviously, from face value, just reading that passage, it sounds like he's saying, Hey, look, all these people have desired to see these things that you've seen, and to hear these things you've hear, heard, and they haven't had the opportunity because they were born in the past and they've died. You're blessed. You're blessed to have this opportunity. And that is a reasonable uh, uh, understanding of that passage. And I've taken that word also where he says, blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. And I've used it for my eyes. You know, I say, blessed are my eyes. Why? For they see. I see, I see clearly. Blessed are my ears, for they hear. I hear clearly. I have hearing ears and seeing eyes. My ears are strong and my eyes are strong. They're healthy. That's good also. That's a good word. But then I was reading all of Matthew chapter 13, and it really got me uh, double extra excited. I'm going to start with verse 10 here. Now in verse 1 through 9, it talks about the parable of the sower. You know, and the sower sows the seed, and some falls on stony ground, and some some falls on hard ground, some falls on stony ground, some falls on, on ground with thorns, and some falls on good ground, right? And he says, whoever has ears to hear, in verse 9, let him hear. Verse 10, the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, It is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now that sounds a little sad. You know, the first thing I think is, well, I want to be in that category. It's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. I don't want to be in the it's not given. Now when they say it's given, sometimes we think, well, it's been granted to you by my sovereign choice. Too bad for the others. And to be quite frank, God has the right to grant and to not grant. You know, I have the right if I have a, I'm always grabbing some random thing. I have my TV remote. If I want to give you the remote, I have the right. It is in my possession. If I don't, then I have the right to not give it to you. Honestly, God has that right. But when he says it's given to you, it seems to me, knowing God and knowing the uh, the principles, it's more of a... You have qualified for this. You have uh, met the specifications, whatever it was, whether it is a qualification of doing what is right or it is a qualification merely of asking. Whatever the qualification is, it has been given to you. It literally has been given to you to know this. This is the thing uh, in my hand, it's invisible right now, is to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Here, have it. It's given to you. Right? For then he says in verse 12, To him who has will more be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because. Why? Because they look and do not see. Ah, now we're talking about some eyes, right? They look and do not see. And they listen, but they do not hear, neither do they understand. And then he elaborates a little more. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Your ears are not blessed. I'm not saying blessed are your ears, because you're hearing, but you don't understand. You're not really hearing. Seeing, you will not perceive. You're not really seeing. Why? For the heart, people's heart has grown dull. Just like the soil, just like that hard soil, their heart is hard. It's dull. Their hearts, the condition of their hearts. There's this passage in uh, Proverbs, is it 3, where it says, Keep your heart, 
or guard your heart above all else. Keep your heart above all keeping. If there's anything else that you guard, if you have all the treasures in the world, you know, you're like a dragon sitting on the treasures and you're hoarding it. Don't guard that treasure. Guard your heart. If you're going to guard something, guard your heart. It says their hearts have grown dull. Their ears have become hard of hearing. They have closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes. What happens if you see? Unless what they hear with their ears, what happens if they hear? And understand with their hearts and turn, and I should heal them. And I think another version says, and I would heal them. Oh, if they would only, I like to sometimes re reword these, if only they would hear, if only they would see. If only they would open their hearts to understand and not be hard and calloused, then I would heal them. Then I would be able to manifest my love toward them. So then he goes to verse 16. But blessed are your eyes. Ha ha ha. I'm going to say that for me. Blessed. That's even more. Oh, that's so much more exciting. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that my eyes, my eyes, my physical eyes are blessed. And I'm glad that my physical ears are blessed. I'm glad that I see the good things of God naturally, but so much more. Blessed are my eyes, for they see. See the wonderful things that God speaks. Blessed are my ears, for they hear. And I follow that up and I say, blessed is my heart, for I open it up and I receive. I receive and I believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed.